Greetings! I'm Tantus Naravan Jakovin, Lord and Emperor of the Jakovin Empire, and welcome. It's again magic, though it's probably not Monday. Today we're going to talk about sets. We're going to start defining the sets that came out and talking a little bit about their history, about their backstory, about what's going on with them. So let's start with the first sets of magic, the limited and unlimited release. Alpha, Beta, Unlimited. That's what they were called. Technically, Unlimited has also been referred to as Second Edition. That's another title for it. But let's talk about them. The first set of magic, Alpha, was released in August 5th of 1993. So that's over 20 years old now. It was Richard Garfield who developed the cards, and his friend, who was at the time president of Wizards of the Coast, which published them. Alpha was a black-bordered magic cards, and they had about 2.6 million created in this first draft of cards. Now, in this first printing, there were plenty of errors. If you actually compare an Alpha and Beta card, the corners are different. The Beta card has the corners of all magic cards. All the magic cards, if you look how the corners are shaped, that's the basic shape of a magic card. Alphas have a different sort of corner. You will notice it dramatically. That's the big difference you can tell between them. Again, it also had some errors. It had some missing cards. It was, it was a little bit of a hot mess. But then came out Beta, the basic second printing. In the second printing, they had over 7 million cards printed here. And that's when they sort of corrected the errors, got the full set together. They got it together, and that was in September of that year. So both of these had black orders. Then we get into December, where we have the Unlimited release. It was considered a reprint, actually. The reprint of Unlimited meant that they decided at this point in time, anytime they're going to reprint cards, they're going to give it a white order. This was sort of, this has been negated since then, but at the time they thought about that. So the Unlimited release was their biggest release, and it lasted, you know, it was their first big set. Most people kind of think about Unlimited as the first release of Magic, because the Alpha and Beta, they had limited numbers. Unlimited, they just printed so many of them, because it was widely popular to begin with. Even. So in December of 93, Unlimited was released. It was the full set. I'll talk about a bunch of the famous cards in it in a minute. They, of course, put out starter boxes, which had 60 cards in them, and booster packs, which had 15, which kind of defined a lot of how Magic was sold for a lot of years. And that white border for, like, the core sets lasted until they got into 10th edition. So consider that this was the 2nd edition. That's how long white borders lasted, until they sort of moved away from reprinting a lot of cards and maybe reprinting some but adding more in in their core sets because these were the core sets to begin with. Uh, I'll talk about expansions and such but the game's supposed to take place in Dominia. It's a plane. It's got all these kind of terrains and stuff. It, that's the basic storyline. You're a planeswalker fighting it out. I've talked about this a little bit and the basic setting is in all these lands and civilizations in Dominia so they mention a lot of these civilizations by name or a lot of lore is built in to this set that maybe isn't expanded upon until much later. It's sort of magic builds upon its own lore. So we talk about there's certain creatures that have names of places in them and we don't know about those places until later on where maybe there's some more cards or there's a comic book they put out or a book which talks about these that they expand upon their world setting and that's a lot of what you know a lot of what happens in the world setting of Magic was established here. So the set had 302 cards. That's a lot of cards, but you know, and a lot of them have been reprinted over the years. A lot of these cards that were in these first set, basically, have been reprinted over and over in different places, different times. There are a bunch of them that actually just, they didn't work enough to be reprinted. They just were discarded because of problems with it, because some of the concepts that began in Unlimited have also been discarded. I'll talk about it later, but Anti. Anti was a concept in Unlimited, <coughs> in the basic rules of the game, which has long been since discarded because it's a very gambling sort of concept and Magic didn't want to be a gambling game. You have to think of it that way. Let's start talking about the famous cards from Unlimited because there's a lot of them. I'm going to talk about the famous cards and then cards of importance. The cards of importance are probably less famous, but they sort of define certain rules or certain archetypes of cards. So the famous ones, though, let's start with the Power Nine. Now, the Power Nine does have some overlap with one of the other groups, the Boons, but I'll mention the last one that overlaps at the end. 
So the first one's Black Lotus. Black Lotus costs you zero mana to play, and you can play it out. And you could sacrifice it, meaning I could discard it from play into my graveyard to get three mana of any color and any combination. It was really good, and it's the most expensive card in any set that is going to be printed in. It's just that good, because it costs you nothing to play. And in a first turn, I could have three, I could have four mana to work with right away and just come up with this awesome sort of hand which gives me a huge advantage. Then there was the five moxes. Each mox, these are again artifacts, each mox represents a different color. They cost you zero to play and you can tap it for one of that color. So for if I'm really lucky, I could have a hand of four moxes if I four in my deck, play them all as four mana. Again, that's why they were so powerful and why they weren't reprinted and why they have this sort of strength to them. Next up is Time Walk. It costs you one blue and one colorless to take an extra turn. There are cards that give you extra turn in more modern magic. They traditionally cost much more mana. The cheapest one you'd think about is called Time Warp, and it costs five. That's the one I would think of, and that's fairly modern and be reprinted here and there. But this one costs you two for an extra turn. Hence why it has me reprinted. Then there was Time Twister, which for three mana, each player shuffles their hand into their library and draws seven cards. Again, really great. And then we get to the last one in the Power Nine, which is one of the boons, is the one blue mana cost, draw three cards, Ancestor or Recall. That gets into the boons. The boons were a card of every color that cost you one mana to get you three of something. The white one, one white mana to gain three life or prevent three damage. The blue one, one blue mana to draw three cards. The black one, one black mana to get three black mana. The red one, one red mana to do three damage. And the green one, one green mana to give a creature plus three plus three. Healing Solve, Ancestral Recall, Dark Ritual, Lightning Bolt, Giant Growth. Giant Growth stayed around the longest of all of these. Healing Solve, nah, it stayed around a little bit. Ancestral Recall went away right away. Dark Ritual stayed around for an amount of time, not nearly as long, and so did Lightning Bolt. These two were the next sticklers up to Giant Growth, which lasted for quite a while. But these were the boons. They're pretty famous. Next up is the Dual Lands. They were non-basic lands, I've talked about them, but they counted for purposes of cards as basic lands. Ah, so I can still only have four in my deck, but I might have one that counts as both a mountain and a swamp and for purposes of anything that mentions mountains and swamps. That's what I would have. Or uh, the volcanic island, mountain island. These were the combination lands. Most modern lands that produce more than one mana aren't considered those basic lands. These were just, and the thing is, there's also might be like in the modern day, they might come into play tap if they count as that, so you couldn't use it your first turn. These I could just play, they didn't come into play tap, they were there, I could use them right away, they counted as both, no special rules, just that, and it was really good. Hence why the dual lands are also very expensive. And the last one of the famous ones is Chaos Orb, which involves another ability which is defunct. You flipped it. You took it on and you flipped it, and it flipped around. If it did a 360, Whatever it landed on, on the board, was destroyed. It was gone. It was kind of crazy that you had to like flip things on the board. There was only a few cards that did that, but, you know, it's this is mechanic where you're using physical motion, and they've gotten rid of that. They've, they've gotten rid of that. So let's talk about less famous cards that had a big impact. We'll talk about them for each color. Let's start with white. White had three groups of cards. It first had a disenchant. Disenchant said... Destroy target artifact or enchantment. Now in days, a lot of cards which do the same are referred to as a disenchant, because this sort of was the example of that original ability. There was the circle of protections. The circle of protections were still white cards, but one for every color. That meant I could spend one mana to prevent damage of a source of that. So if I'm getting hit with a red creature, I could prevent, pay one mana, prevent red damage to myself. They were, you know, predefining. They stayed around for a while. And then the wards. I haven't ever talked about protection, but I will talk about it in the future. The wards each gave protection from that color. They didn't get rid of themselves. So there was a protection from white, protection from blue, all these things. 
I'll explain protection later, but it's sort of this was the defining sort of stuff about white. Next, let's talk about blue. Blue, of course, had counterspell. Blue was the first color, and pretty much the only color, to define a counterspell, which is you counter a spell. Target spell does not resolve. Target spell is destroyed. You know, it gets rid of a spell being cast, is what it does. It prevents it from working. You counter it. And this was the first sort of card sets to define it. And this was the big one in blue for a while. It was a two mana cost. It's been replaced since then that the cheapest counter spells, because it's a group of cards now, are three, of course. But this was the start of it. And then, of course, for a long time, blue had Prodigal Sorcerer and the Tims. The Tims is a reference to the Tim the Enchanter from Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Uh, it just became this moniker for this one creature called Prodigal Sorcerer. Prodigal Sorcerer was tap, do one damage, target creature or player. That's what it was. And for the longest time we had a lot of blue creatures that did that, that tapped and dealt damage. And it wasn't until much later on that sort of red took over that ability. So now if you see creatures that tap do damage, they're most likely going to be red. That red sort of took over that ability. But in the original times, there was like Tims, and there was like nicknames for things that would do that. And it was this entire, you know, mythos of Tim, which you started with. It was, it was very interesting at the time. We're going to Black. Black, of course, had Terror, which was just destroy target non-black, non-artifact creature. It, they, you started with these spells that would destroy non-black creatures, or destroy non-black, non-artifact creatures, or sometimes you'd get really lucky and it'd be one that would destroy anything. Black defined spells which just kill a creature right away. That's what black was defined in. And they also defined the card search, where I search my library. Demonic Tutor. It cost you two mana and you searched your library for any card you wanted and put it in your hand. I own a few. I own one from Unlimited and one from Revised. That's one of my big cards I have. But it's sort of you can play it and you can search your library and pick one out. And there have been a lot of cards which do the same nowadays, but they're usually not so cheap. You know, Things in Magic, if they're really good and they're de decided to be very good, they oftentimes go up more expensive to cast. That's the big thing about them. So now, let's move on to cards from Red. Uh, of course, you have Fireball and Disintegrate. They were the first spells which would cost you X mana, which is any amount of mana you wanted to do X amount of damage to target creature or player. And they, of course, had special rules associated with each of them, like Fireball could split their damage, Disintegrate, if it kills a creature, it's removed from the game, which they didn't even define as being removed from the game at this point in time. It took sets before they could even figure out what that sort of concept was, but that's what Fireball and Disintegrate were. You know, they were sort of these initial spells that just burned someone for X damage. In green, you have the Lanowar Elf. Lanowar being a location being defined in it, but he tapped for a green mana. He was a one mana cost elf, which tapped for one green mana, which means on your first turn I can play a land or elf. I've already doubled my amount of mana, so my next turn, on my second turn, I could have three. I'm already ahead. And that was the sort of tradition of green accelerating their cost and having these cheap elves you can play to get extra mana. They also had wild growth, which was an enchantment you place on land, but make a land tap for an extra green. So it's sort of like you have these cards which made green be defined as producing more mana. Now, there's some cards which have split between the different colors. There's the elementals, which were big creatures. They had fire, earth, water, wind, split between blue and red, that these were like a big source of original creatures that had a theme to them. You know, themes have come into magic and spread across a lot of them, and you can find these themes in different sets. And this was sort of the starts of it where you have these themes of types of creatures that might not just be in one color and they spread out and you can sort of, you can make a deck of just this theme. And this was the start of it because there wasn't a lot of other matching creature types at this point in time. You did have some and there weren't as many creature types also. A lot of these older cards have been eroded to change the creature types. Uh, you might find some that have more than one creature type now. And there's the card that might be have just been a knight before, which maybe is now a human knight. That sort of thing. Okay, there was the laces. The laces, they were in each color, and you change the color of that card to it. So if I had the red version of the lace, I'd make a card red. And the white version of it, you make a card white. That sort of thing. And this could be just changing the color of cards in the game. 
there hasn't been a lot of that lately. There is some still, but this was the big point of it, that it was a theme at this point. Now, what else is there? There were artifacts that you could pay mana to gain life if you cast a spell of that color. There was a black artifact. I play back spell. I pay one mana, I gain one life. There was a red one. I played a red spell. I pay one mana, I gain one life. And there was one for each color of these artifacts. They were the beginning of artifacts that allow you to use cards to play like gain life. That theme has actually existed in some retrospect for the longest period of time. Even now, you can find cards which will do that sort of thing, where some of them are you choose a color when it comes into play. You know, some of them have been like, it just is what it is when it comes into play. And the last thing is, they had the basic lands. That's really what we have to say, is basic lands came into play in Unlimited. That's where they were defined, and it's some of the most important thing you have to think about is they are one of the most important cards, and you get how the systems were built in Magic right here. All right, so we've talked about Unlimited and the Limited releases. We've talked about some of the history of Magic. There wasn't really big backstory to this world at this point in time. You know, the cards themselves have hinted on this world of Dominia, of this history, of all these sort of things. We've got, like, you know, where Magic came from, how long it's been here. Anyway. So please, if we want to discuss it, ask any questions, leave a comment. If you enjoyed this video, please like it. Please, we're always looking for more Citizens of the Empire. Subscribe if you want to join us. You're welcome to do so. And until next time, I bid you farewell.